Great, thank you for joining us today. Um, I am Megan O'Malley with Move for Hunger, and we are doing Ruth's cooking, sustainable cooking class as part of our Move to Challenge um, this, this month. And uh, so by attending this class, whether you're attending and with us today um, live or whether you're watching this virtually, you can, uh, after the fact, you can, don't forget to uh, log your uh, cooking time in your Atlas Go app. Um, and we'll be talking about um, sustainable cooking. We'll talk about vegetarian cooking. We'll be talking about cooking from scratch. So you have a couple different options to go with. Um, as you are looking at the activities within Atlas Go. So don't forget to log the time. I wanna thank Ruth um, Solomon, who is with Move for Hunger, our own chef Ruth, who will cook for us today. Um, I'm gonna to start for those who don't know with a little bit of background. Um, Move for Hunger is a national nonprofit organization that's created a sustainable way to reduce food waste and fight hunger. Um, we have mobilized the leaders of the moving, relocation, and multifamily industries to provide um, their customers, clients, and residents with the opportunity to donate their food when they move. Um, move for Hunger, members of Move for Hunger also organize community food drives, um, participate in awareness campaigns, and create employee engagement programs. A Move for Hunger was founded by Adam Lowy in 2009, so we are 13 years strong. Um, and Adam started working with his family's moving company and on one of his jobs just started asking, hey, do you wanna donate your food when you move? Um, and he collected about 3,000 um, pounds when he first did this and you know saw saw the need so from that experience move for hunger was born and we now have a network of movers and um multi-family um companies all across the u.s um and we have rescued um to date delivered more than 26 million pounds of food to food banks in the u.s and canada and i think as of this week we have raised enough to provide 23 million meals to those in need. Um, so in addition to the food rescue, we also provide education on how to um, reduce your food waste and to live more sustainably. So that's sort of why we're here today. We are bringing in, um, again, Chef Ruth with our, um, with our, with Move for Hunger, who will um, walk us through and teach us how to cook sustainably and has some yummy recipes for us um, to learn. So with this, I'm going to turn it over to Ruth. Thank you, Megan. Hi, everybody. Thanks uh, to my parents for being here live. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, today, we're going to be talking about a zero waste tomato soup and grilled cheese, kind of put it on a fun spin to a classic uh, meal that I'm sure most of us have enjoyed over over the times. And today I wanted to talk about how to, um, you know, add some nutrition and also to use up some leftovers in this very like classic meal. So we're going to get started. I'm going to walk through the tomato soup first, and then we'll make a yummy grilled cheese to go with it. Um, so just a couple things about food waste in general before we get started. About 35% of all food either goes unsold or uneaten in the US. So that's anything from food getting left in the fields, not being harvested, um, not making it out of processing plants, all the way to uh, grocery stores, and then all the way to our fridges at home. So it's not any one person's fault. It's like a whole system where we have a lot of excess. And so that's why we have amazing organizations such as Move for Hunger, where we redistribute some of this excess to folks who really are in need of um, high nutrition. So today what we're going to get started with is um, kind of like hide all my leftovers into my uh, tomato soup. So the other night I made a yummy grilled dinner because it's summertime and it's fun and I have some grilled onions and zucchini and peppers 
I just like don't really know what to do with them anymore. And I figured they're still tasty. They're still healthy. So why don't we throw them into a soup? So what I'm going to get started with right now is um, just starting like our soup base. And I like to start um, all of my soups with garlic and onions, carrots, celery, which I've already pre-chopped. There's a recipe that got sent out and you can also find it on our blog as well. Um, this is a really customizable recipe, kind of whatever you like and whatever you have laying around. It's supposed to be really easy for whatever you want. Um, and before I get started, there's a couple different ways that you can make this tomato soup. If you're really not, like if you don't have a lot of time, you could blend everything up in a blender and then put it on the stove on a pot and just let it reduce and kind of build flavor that way. You could throw everything into a, a crock pot or an Instapot, something like that, and kind of just let it go and blend it up later or leave it chunky, however you like. Um, but we're gonna talk a little bit about building fla flavor and like layering flavor. So I'm a big fan of garlic and I'm probably gonna put these two cloves in there. And you can either roughly chop or, you know, if you don't have any fresh garlic, you could also use dried garlic, roasted garlic. You know, people have the garlic chopped up in a little jar in your fridge. But my favorite way is to take slices of garlic, like kind of like this, thin slices, and I put it into a cold pan with oil. And that way, when I start to heat up the oil to cook the rest of my veggies, now all of that oil tastes like yummy garlic. And so you could chop up your garlic into small pieces or you can slice it thin. And when you slice it thin, what happens is it has more surface area excuse me, hold please, technical difficulties. <laughs> there we go. So it has more surface area along the garlic so that it gets caramelized and you get all that really nice flavor. So I'm just gonna finish chopping up, slicing. So Ruth, a question, what if you pressed your garlic instead of chopping it? So if you, that's a great question. If you press your garlic, it's going to have a lot more water content um, and so I wouldn't suggest doing it first. I would actually start with your, um, you know, your vegetables and then add your garlic afterwards. Because if you start that a little early with just oil, you might cause, you might run the risk of burning your garlic. And while caramelized and dark, uh, you know, you want some color, but once it's burnt, it's not very tasty. It kind of leaves a bitter taste for the rest of it. So I'll, I'll pick it up in a second. I'll show you what's going on, but... Pretty much right now, we're just kind of blooming our garlic in oil. Can you see it? Probably not. Nope, just kidding. And I don't <laughs> want to put it all over myself. <laughs> but it smells really fragrant. I kind of have it on a medium low heat so that, um, you know, don't, we're not running the risk of burning anything. And we're just going to kind of toss it a couple times and wait for the color to get a little bit caramelized on the outside. We're looking for like a little amber color. And that way, you know, it'll continue to cook when the rest of it is, um, when you add the rest of the ingredients. But so you can see, it really doesn't take that much time. Um, I'm not sure how the quality of my camera is going to show up, but you can kind of start to see maybe on the outside, it's getting a little brown. It smells delicious already. And I don't know, it's been maybe like 45 seconds, and I'm already going to go ahead with all of my vegetables. So you can kind of hear that popping. My oil is nice and hot. I'll turn down the heat a little bit. Just kind of stir these vegetables together and let everything kind of cook down and get that nice color for a few minutes. Um, again, when you're adding vegetables, you want to add them in stages. So you can add your onions, wait for them to cook, then your carrots and your celery. I'm going to put it all together because we're going to blend it up, but um, you always want to like season your vegetables. So I'm going to put some salt and some freshly ground pepper and kind of let that all come together. So Ruth, I'm going to make you multitask as you're cooking. So did you just like to cook? Did your parents... Um, you know, teach you to cook and that is that the end of it or how how are you 
um, how did you come to like to cook? Yeah, um, I was actually extremely scared of knives when I was younger and didn't like to do much in the kitchen. My mom would let me peel potatoes and that was my job. And both my parents cooked fresh meals, but in very different ways. Like I felt like my mom was more of a home cook. You know, we did the chicken and potatoes a lot. And my dad, when we were growing up, we had lots of different recipes that we would try out. Um, and he didn't really let me help. So I feel like I always wanted to, you know, um, but over time, I think like food has been just such an important part of my family and growing up Jewish, there's a lot of holidays that have a lot of traditional meals. So we're always coming together around food. And I don't know, I guess at some point I just started liking it more. Sorry about the noise with the tasty vegetable sauteing, but, um, I remember in high school, they took us on a trip to a food pantry and we were packaging food for, you know, uh, local families in need and putting things together. And it was a really lovely experience. And I just like, I started to open up and realize how fortunate I was growing up, always having a fresh meal on the table and, and fresh food. Um, and just realizing that a lot of people don't have access to that. So that kind of opened my mind up and I was already starting to kind of get more interested in cooking. So I was like, all right, well, I kind of want to explore this food realm. And a friend of my mom's had suggested going to Johnson and Wales University because they have a culinary program as well as, um, you know, a business program, a food entrepreneurship. So they had a lot of options for you to kind of explore what you want. And before I went to college, I did a couple of years of traveling, working on different organic farms, doing um, like a work exchange to just like see how other people connected with their food and culture and what, you know, organic food meant to them or other things like that. So kind of just started to collect all these different experiences around food and then when I went to culinary school and got more of the like formal chef training and restaurant experience I my, my mind was more open uh to just all of it and in school I joined uh the sustainability club called student activists supporting sustainability and from there I feel like food rescue, accessibility, you know, nonprofit scene, like that just all came so naturally to me. And I realized that was more where I wanted to kind of go forward. So coming back to the uh, vegetables real quick, everything is smelling really tasty. The onions are starting to get a little translucent. You know, the vegetables are starting to break down a little bit. So we're going to give us a couple more minutes. And then what I'm going to add next is the canned tomato product because um, I'm using these really lovely whole plum tomatoes. And so I wanna give them kind of some time to break down. And all these cooked vegetables will go in at the end because we don't want them to lose all of their delicious nutrient, uh, nutrients, nutrient dense uh, density, sorry. <laughs> but um, just talking about variation again, if you like spice, you can add chili. I have this dried Kashmiri chili. I'm just gonna crush it up and add it right now. This would be a good time to add any aromatics if you like, like dried rosemary or thyme. Today I have fresh parsley and cilantro. So I'm gonna add those towards the end so that they keep their flavor. Um, and going back to garlic, I wanted to talk a little bit about roasted garlic because I had some here. And I think that's a, a really lovely alternative if you have any sensitivity, because it kind of takes out that bitter spiciness of garlic and it's a really lovely flavor enhancer. So, so I think we're getting pretty close. I'm gonna try to, to give another view. You know, hopefully for future cooking classes, we'll get a better angle for the, the cooking itself. But um, let's see, you can start to kind of see everything come together looking nice. Smells really amazing in here. I wish I could be cooking for all of you. <laughs> what, what we need to add 
sent to Zoom. <laughs> yeah, right? They do. <laughs> they need a scent. Um, and so this recipe is super simple. Like if you had these vegetables, you could add it. If you only had an onion, you could do that. You know, if you had tomato paste, you could add that to build flavor. Um, I really love tomato soup because I don't know, it's very like nostalgic and just like tasty. So I love how customizable it is. I'm going to add my entire can with the whole tomatoes and also all the juice and kind of let that start to bubble down and cook. I'm going to give the tomatoes a little bit of a crush since they're uh, whole. That way they start to break down. I might be jumping ahead in your recipe, but is there other liquid that you add in? Or are you are you just using the liquid from the tomatoes? That's a great question. I have some homemade chicken stock uh, available and you can also use vegetable stock or even just water and let like the flavor um, of the soup kind of do its thing. But I just add it in sparingly, depending on how many vegetables I'm adding or what type of vegetables I'm adding will depend on how much water content. So right now we're in the summer season and zucchini and peppers and all these other really lovely ingredients are full of water and freshness. But you could also make this recipe in the wintertime with like parsnip or you could sub the tomatoes for roasted butternut squash and those um, hardier and more root vegetables will need more liquid to get that like kind of smooth consistency if you're blending it, which I plan on doing. Um, so I really want to like kind of get people more excited about the cooking process and paying more attention, less so about a recipe and more about a feeling as well. Um, that's how I like to cook. I like to cook with the heart. And even though I'm trained, I feel like I'm much more of just kind of a, a home hack, a home chef, you know? <laughs> and uh, that's why I love to love to educate people on how to cook for themselves because it should be fun. It should be joyous. And I think that it tastes better when you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Sure. What did you use for the oil? Um, I used olive oil. You can use any type of grease you'd like. You can use, um, you know, if you render bacon, you can use bacon fat. That gives it another flavor. You can use butter. If you're sensitive or trying to cut out oils, you can kind of do all of this with water instead, you know, and just, I would keep it on a lower heat. Um, you won't get as much of the caramelized flavor, which is totally fine. Um, kind of just depends. And you can also add whatever spices you want to, to kind of change the flavor. But I, I generally use olive oil. It's my go-to for most sauteing and cooking things. I think that it has a good smoke point and a good flavor if you're using a good brand. So that's a great question. Thank you. I didn't even mention. And so while we're waiting for this to kind of bubble and reduce, speaking of liquids and oils and all that good stuff, um, I wanted to talk about another zero waste hack on making your own soup stocks and broths because I think that's like a really great way to eliminate food waste or to give your food another life. Um, so the celery, the onion, the carrots, they all had peels and ends and skins even the garlic has skins and anything that you would put into a soup. Um, so I would probably stay away from, you know, like the pepper seeds or maybe some of that kind of stuff. Um, but kind of all the ingredients that you would put into a soup or a stock, I like to keep a bag in my freezer and put all of those little bits and ends together. And then when the bag gets all nice and full, I cover it, I put it in a pot and cover it with cold water and bring that up to like a very low simmer. And, or honestly, a great other way, you can throw it in your crock pot overnight and just kind of let everything melt together. And it's a great way to kind of bring another life to some of those bits and ends of your, of your vegetables. Or if you roast a chicken, you can throw the chicken carcass with a couple of vegetables in. That's what this, this, uh, stock is about. And um, yeah, I think it's a great way uh, 
like I said, to use up leftovers and also just one last thing to buy at the store if you can make it so, yourself. So Ruth, you're saying you can use your onion skins, your garlic mm -hmm. skins, your... Yep. As like, long as it doesn't have like dirt, dirt on it. You know, if you're using like the outer layer and if anything has mold on it, definitely I would suggest composting that or if you don't have access to compost, toss it. But yeah, like when you're kind of trimming the ends of your vegetables and you want the best of the best in your soup, like kind of all those bits and ends you can store in the freezer so that they don't go bad and then put together. I can definitely put together a little kind of um, do's and don'ts for homemade stock. I think that would be a good one to yeah. kind of develop. And how long can you keep your homemade stock? So I keep it in the freezer for definitely label anything you're putting in your freezer so you know when it happened. Um, but I have kept stock in the freezer for a couple of months. I wouldn't suggest doing too much after that. And in the fridge is probably about like three to five days, depending on how fresh it is. Um, I would definitely suggest uh, just constantly taking pun intended stock of what's in your fridge and um, kind of seeing what was there, what was put in first so that you can kind of use that first. There's a really fun term called FIFO, first in, first out. Um, and I live by that because I want to make sure that I'm using up all of my ingredients before going to the store or going to the farmer's market and kind of seeing what I have and planning, planning some meals around that before, um, before moving on. Um, I just wanted to mention everything is kind of blending. Things are starting to break down. It looks like the carrots and the celery are looking a bit softer. So I'm going to pop a lid on this for a minute and just kind of let it all reduce together a little bit before adding anything else. So I wanted to just add something to the stock idea. Another little yeah. hack. When you're freezing, freeze it in smaller containers, True. like cup size containers or, yeah. you know, because that way you can defrost what you need. Absolutely. And you'll get longer life. Yeah. yeah. So I have two right here because um, I wasn't sure how much I would need, but that's a great, that's a great tip. Um, definitely to store in smaller containers. And I, I think everybody sh like a, a great suggestion I've had is like putting um, either a little label or, you know, putting the date on so that you can kind of be like, oh, this is about to go bad, you know, or I think that's an important thing to just kind of be aware of, like, because our weeks can get so busy. And then what's this random thing in the back of my fridge, you know, like you don't want to have to throw that out. So, um, yeah, I was just uh, thinking about, you know, I had mentioned the different types of oils and butters can put in this, this recipe is easy, uh, an easy vegan dish if you just keep it with the oil and no butter. If you're sensitive to gluten, you can kind of make a salad instead of a grilled cheese situation. Um, there's all these great alternatives to gluten-free breads and, and vegan cheeses now. Um, so I just love how, how easy this recipe is to customize to whatever your dietary needs or, or um, you know, health restrictions, anything. Yeah. <laughs> I also was thinking about it today. I got really excited. Um, grilled cheese croutons. I feel like that would be a really fun oh, addition. Yeah, I might end up doing that. We'll see. <laughs> so I have the heat on kind of medium high and there's a lot of, a lot of liquid in here. So I don't know how much stock necessarily I'm gonna put in but it's all blending really nice together or bubbling really nice together. I'm a big fan of tasting as you go so you can see how salty or seasoned your food is. Um, you can always add more, you can't take away. So I would always um, be cautious when adding, but it's nice you get to taste little things as you go. <laughs> Mm, it's so good. Even just like that, so tasty. So is your plan and and doing this? So once once you get the soup to the 
the point that you like, then you would work on work um, making the the sandwich or whatever you have going along with the soup, or do you complete the soup and then work on whatever you're going to have with the soup? Well, the nice thing about this type of soup is that, you know, it'll stay hot in the pot. So if you aren't good at multitasking, you can kind of let it just either simmer in the back or once it's all done and blended, get started on your, um, get started on your sandwich. Uh, I'm a big stickler for timing. I like everything to come out on time. Um, so I'm going to wait until I'm ready to blend to kind of start the sandwich because it should just take a couple minutes, but there's a couple different ways you can make the sandwich. You could throw it in an air fryer or a toaster oven or your oven. If you're cooking a bunch of them at one time and you want to, you want to kind of just bang it all out at once or maybe under your broiler. I just, know that grilled cheese cooks quickly and I can get very excited and then forget and I don't want to burn anything um so I'm just gonna so, wait for it <laughs> so interesting I've never heard of putting a, a grilled cheese in the air fryer that's an interesting yeah thing. I feel like I've seen a lot of videos I don't own one personally um I feel like I might have to to borrow friends and check it out but yeah I mean, you're just basically melting cheese on bread, which is kind of like my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like also in terms of the soup, you can you can add some cream to the end if you want, make it a little creamier. Like I said, you can add chicken stock or vegetable stock or water if you want it to be a little bit thinner. Um, I kind of find that I always have tomato soup left over. It's hard to make like a small amount of tomato soup. And so even though we're hiding leftovers in this tomato soup, like thinking about after this meal, like what else can I do with it? And so I was thinking about a couple of alternatives. Um, one that I thought was fun, which I might uh, play around with is adding dry rice to the soup and adding like seasoned chicken thighs and baking it and kind of making like a one pot meal that way. I'm a big fan of shakshuka, which is like, um, or eggs in purgatory, if, if you've heard of that before, where you take a nice seasoned tomato sauce um, and you crack a couple eggs and you like cover it and put it over heat so that you kind of cook the eggs into the tomato sauce. Mm. That's a really good one with like toasty bread. Um, you could, could it use a pasta sauce. It could definitely become a pasta sauce for sure, depending on how you flavor it. Um, really easy, simple dinner. You know, you just add the pasta to some boiling water and then toss it all together. You could also use this as a base for your chili too, and just kind of season it up with maybe some more ingredients like, uh, you know, like cumin or some more chilies out of a couple beans. You could throw this all in a crock pot. So I definitely want to try to leave you with some tips on not to make more, more food waste, you know, or more leftovers, but different ways to use everything up. So you kind of touched on how this is ways to hide your leftovers into a soup. So are there any leftovers that perhaps you shouldn't consider throwing in to your soup or, or is there something that you, other than vegetables that you would really gravitate towards throwing into your soup? Yeah, um, I probably would steer clear of things like cook, like cooked potatoes. I don't know if that would be my jam. Maybe um, I feel like there would be a, a lot thicker consistency. You would want to add a lot more water, um, depending on if we want to keep it chunky or blend it. You could add like beans would be really nice. Um, hmm, it's a good question. What else would you not add to it? I feel like tomatoes are such a strong flavor that you could really hide a lot of stuff in there. Um, it's also a great way to add vegetables for like picky kids. If they don't like to eat vegetables, you could add things like, like I said, like zucchini or eggplant or I don't know, pretty much anything that you want to get your kids to try. <laughs> I am going to uh, just give a rough chop to some of these peppers and some of these onions and zucchini they're already cooked so I just want to kind of put them all in there and get them all flavored together Ooh. 
and I'm going to save the herbs for the end. <laughs> so now that I've added more stuff, more content, I see that like there's a lot less water. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of stock and I'll, I'll bring the pot over so you can kind of see what I'm talking about before I add stuff. So it's not really that much liquid kind of going on in there. It kind of looks more like a ratatouille, which love a good ratatouille, but um, I want this to be a nice creamy soup. So I'm going to go in with about a cup, start with that and kind of see how it goes. And you have not yet added your herbs. Nope, because they're fresh, I'm going to add them right at the very end because I want them to kind of keep that brightness and that freshness. If they were dried or if they were maybe a heartier herb like rosemary or thyme, I might add that kind of earlier on. You can add them whenever, really. I personally like to add them when I'm sauteing the onions and the garlic. Um, I don't really know why I do that. I think it's just something I picked up from, you know, different places that I've worked. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's already looking so good just as it is like this. I feel like this could be a start of a very delicious chili. <laughs> it's almost a shame to blend it up because it looks so pretty, but it's okay. <laughs> well, but you could leave it chunky if you want. Absolutely. I also am a big fan of kind of, excuse me, taking some out and blending some. So you kind of have some chunky, some smooth, depending on what you like. I'm a big fan of that. I'm actually pretty happy with what it's looking like right now. So I'm just going to pop a lid on and I'm going to move it to the back so it can, um, so it can kind of simmer a little bit. And then I guess we'll talk about grilled cheese and get ready to blend and make our, our grilled cheese as well. Um, so you could do a classic, just, you know, bread and cheese and that's it and that's totally fine um, i'm using some local white sourdough and i'm going to use some pepper jack cheese that i have sliced and i shredded my own uh, munster cheese before and i would definitely suggest not using uh, pre-shredded shredded cheese you can and it will melt it just they do add like a caking agent so that it doesn't congeal together so it does take a little bit longer to um to melt but I would suggest either sliced or to shred your own cheese. That would be my, um, my suggestion for grilled cheese. And you could do a lot of things. You could add butter or oil, but I'm a big fan of adding mayo to my butter to toast it. It does give it like a little different flavor. And if you're not like a big mayo person, butter and oil is totally fine as well. I'm going to use this flat cast iron pan and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put both sides of the bread that are mayoed down and I'm going to add a couple of little fun things to my sandwich and just melt the cheese on top, cover it so that it all gets melty together and then kind of put it together. So it's first thing. That's interesting. I have always put my sandwich together mm -hmm. and then done one okay, side and then flipped it. Yeah. I've I learned definitely, a new technique today. I've done that my whole life. And then just recently I started doing this and I, I just really like it. I don't know. It does take a little bit of finesse. You want to make sure when you put it together that the cheese doesn't fly off, but I'm just using my little spatula to kind of get my bread all mayoed. There we go. And um, you can get really funky here. Like, so the oil from the, uh, from the roasted garlic, you could maybe use that if you wanted to, that would be fun. And I was thinking about different additions because there's so many fun things in the soup. Um, I think I'm gonna take some of that grilled onion and I have some spicy mustard. Um, I think I'm gonna add that to my grilled cheese. So I'm gonna add the mustard underneath the cheese layer and then kind of lay the onions in between the cheese. That's gonna be my that's fantastic <laughs> yeah I really like adding mustard to grilled cheese you could also get really fancy and do like brie and jam in your grilled cheese if you wanted to um you could add pickles lots of other condiments I feel like there's always like those random bits of jars of things that you never know what to do with 
throw it in a grilled cheese, you know, kind of play around with the different flavor combinations. You might find something that you really like. I find all the time that I just mess around with my kitchen and end up finding recipes that I really like to cook and will recreate them. I probably would have never made them if I didn't just like happen to have random things. Um, I don't know if anybody watches the show Chopped, but like, that's my inspiration. I just see what's around and see what I can put together. So um, the soup is fiercely bubbling away. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. I'm really happy with the consistency, with the amount of liquid that's in there. And I'm just going to let it rock for a little bit because the longer you let it sit, like the better the flavor is going to be. That's why I suggested earlier um, a crock pot is good. Another way to kind of infuse some flavor into crock pot cooking is to make sure that you saute the vegetables beforehand. So you kind of get some of that caramelized flavor and then you add it in there. But it's also good just to throw it in and forget about it. <laughs> just let it sit for a long time. Um, yeah, I think we should start on the grilled cheese. I'm gonna put my pan on like a lower heat because we're melting slow. So if we go hot right off the rip, it's just gonna burn our bread and we want it to be nice golden brown. Um, I'm gonna wait for the pan to heat up a little bit and then I'll add it. So do would you, you ever start yeah. with a cold pan or do you always start with a hot pan? Um, I am a big fan of starting with a medium hot pan. I don't want it to be too hot because I don't want to burn anything. The times where I start with a cold pan, honestly, is when I'm cooking bacon or if I'm trying to kind of do that like sliced garlic technique that I showed beforehand or any type of garlic where you just you want the oil to taste like garlic, but you don't want to like cook it too quickly. Um, I hear my cat crying outside. He smells how good it smells in here and he wants in, but he'll have to wait. <laughs> Um, so right now I have mayo on one side and I did some spicy mustard and I'm going to put pepper jack on one side of my sandwich and I'm going to do Munster on the other because, you know, I'm feeling fancy. Why not? So my pan is now mediumly toasted and I'm going to add my bread. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Awesome. I love the angles. <laughs> Um, definitely be careful when you're shredding your cheese. I wasn't shredding this cheese, but I was making pasta last night and the cheese block that I had was like a little hard and old, which is totally fine. I just, I nicked myself. So definitely be careful when you're using sharp tools. <laughs> Anyone can cut themselves. So, and then I am just going to kind of roughly chop some of these like really lovely spring onions that I grilled and they're just so tasty. I can't wait. Mm, yum. So I'm gonna do just like a little cleanup over here so that I can blend my soup. And you might get to this in the blending but do you prefer putting it into an actual blender, putting it in or using a stick blender or? I prefer an actual blender. I currently don't have one, mine broke. <laughs> so I, uh, I need to get a new one, but I think that putting them in an actual blender will give it the creamiest consistency. You can also put this in a food processor if you have that, um, or like I'm gonna use today, I have just a stick blender or immersion blender, a immersion blender or hand blender. That's also a good one. Um, definitely a pro tip, just be careful, especially with the hot tomato soup. Um, I'll, I'll show you, try not to like blend it too close to you, but yeah. all right. So we got our bread is starting to toast. I do have a lid because that will help kind of melt the cheese as well, but I'm gonna like let it toast up a little bit before I do that. And I just turned the soup off for a minute. I don't know when we started, but I don't think that took more than like 25 minutes to kind of throw all together. So I am going to grab it. Careful if it's hot. Let me see if I can change the angle. I don't know. I'm scared to move my camera, honestly. <laughs> Ooh, nice steam. Yeah. 
I'm going to tilt it down so you can see. Ooh, very pretty. Nice color. Yeah. Perfect. We could see that. What'd you say? We could see that well. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a little loud with the blend. So I think I'm just going to mute myself real quick, but I will give a better angle as well so you can see the magic. So you can see everything's getting all blended and yummy together. Um, I don't know if you could tell, but the consistency is really nice. I think I'm going to keep mine half chunky, half blended. So I'm just going to make sure that my tomatoes are all good, but this is looking really yummy. So I'm going to put it myself fantastic. in one minute. <laughs> And at this point, um, you could chop it if you want. I'm a big fan of just ripping my herbs up, but I'm gonna kind of blend those in as well. So I'm just gonna kind of give a nice little rough rip to them. Check in on my sandwich real quick. You can start to see that it's getting some nice caramelized flavor. I would not recommend picking it up. I do have chef hands and I kind of lift hot things, <laughs> but yeah, so that's starting to get nice. I'm going to add my onions on top of that cheese that's melting. We want to make sure that like any ingredients that you're adding also gets warmed up. So I am going to pop a lid over this and kind of let that continue to melt as the bread toasts while I finish blending my soup. So Ruth, you can answer this when you come back off mute, but it looks like you're blending in chunks, like picking up the blender rather than just moving it around. Yes, that is a great observation. So I think that I'm just kind of finding the biggest pieces in my soup. So like those big whole plum tomatoes that didn't break down all the way, um, the carrots that are in there, you kind of want to search for those little chili like chunks as well, unless you like it spicy and you're willing to risk it, you could pull those out or you want to make sure that those are well blended as well. Um, and then also it's hard to see, but I'm tilting the tomato soup away from me so that it pools to one side. And when I blend it, it's not just like popping up at me because careful, it's very hot. That's why if you're going to put it in a blender blender, I would suggest, um, you know, keeping the little top of the blender off and covering it with a towel. Like you just want to make sure that it doesn't pop up in your face, but I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I think it looks absolutely delicious. It's got a nice, good chunk to it. Ooh, yeah, yeah. It smells amazing. Definitely give it a taste so that we know. Turn my heat down. Give it a taste so that we know that it's seasoned properly. See if it needs salt or pepper. Mm, wow, really good. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. And you can see that I didn't really add much seasoning. I'm kind of just letting the vegetables and um, the tomatoes kind of take, like be the star. And you are free to add whatever seasonings that you like. I personally just kind of like to keep it simple. And I did bring out this uh, heavy cream, but I don't even think I'm going to add it. I was going to add it and make it a little bit juicier, but I think it's good. All right, see, I'm just talking a little bit too much and my, my bread's starting to get a little toasty. So I just put them together. It's a little bit burnt, not going to lie, <laughs> but I kind of like it that way. You too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would just suggest if you want to not get it that toasty to keep your your pan on a, a little bit lower heat but everything is pretty much ready so you kind of let it melt all together you push it together and turn the heat off i'm gonna let it sit for a minute because if you cut into it now all the cheese will kind of just 
ooze out. So I had a couple of questions for all of you while I'm uh, cleaning up, but I wanted to know what do you like to eat typically on like a weeknight and how much do you like, how much time do you like to spend cooking as well? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I, I would like to spend about not more than a half an hour. Well, it depends if I'm prepared earlier and I'm not starving, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But if I'm really hungry, I don't want it to be more than half an hour. Sure. Yeah. Do you think that this this is a attainable? Oh, there's the dogs in the background. <laughs> is this attainable within half an hour to make a, a soup and a sandwich or or something of that variety? Yeah, I, I, oh, go ahead, Jen. No, I was gonna say if you're if you've got it in your head what you need and you have all the ingredients, right it, then right. you could definitely get it going and have yeah, this delicious sure. meal. Sure. I think it's important to mention too, you know, like cook time versus prep time, you know, like I'm, I, I think with these type of soups, especially when you're going to blend them, like you don't have to cook, cut everything so perfectly, you know, like you can definitely just have rough chopped vegetables and throw it in together. You don't need to have it so precise, but it is also a nice way to practice your cooking or your cutting technique too, because if they don't come out good, then you're just blending it up anyway, or, you know, it's getting, it's getting all put together. So. Um, How do you get the tomatoes to not taste so acidic? Um, time for sure. Just like letting them sit and reduce. Um, I also didn't have any, but adding tomato paste before adding any liquid and kind of letting that caramelize too will help. Um, uh, I think if you use fresh tomatoes, definitely different flavor, but that won't be as acidic. Anything that like sits in a can, I would suggest just like cooking it for a little bit longer. Um, and I think also just the other fresh ingredients and the herbs in there kind of help kind of give some sweetness and tame it. Um, I know I've seen other recipes where people add like sugar to their uh, tomato yeah, stuff. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of that. I will maybe add like some vinegar, uh, like maybe some apple cider vinegar if I want that effect. Um, kind of gives it a bite. And also the sugars in the apple cider vinegar will kind of add to that sweetness as well. Um, let's see. I am just about there. I'm going to cut into my sandwich. I want to find like a nice angle to show this to you. <laughs> you guys don't see the behind the scenes, maybe a little, a little bit when I turned it around, but there's a lot happening behind here. <laughs> but, um, so this is our grilled cheese. It's a little, a little toasty, but I'm very excited. I'll give you the, the cheese pull if there is one, there isn't, but so this is my grilled cheese with spicy mustard and grilled onions. Munster and pepper jack, and my lovely tomato soup. And yeah, I don't even know how long that took, but it felt like it was pretty quick and you guys helped it go by pretty fast too with all those fun questions. <laughs> and great, well, Ruth, this has been fantastic. And I think we'll Thank all you. walk away with, you know, ways that we can cook more responsibly and mm -hmm. options for, um, how to use our leftovers and keep from throwing them out. So absolutely, yeah. I definitely just want to leave with a couple of uh, nuggets, like get creative. If you have time, you know, like throw in different things, see what you like. You might discover that you like something new. Um, like I said before, just because it was around. Um, and yeah, I think that all of these things are really customizable to how either like you like to eat or how you're trying to eat. You know, if you're trying to be more healthy, if you're trying to eat more vegetables, if you're trying to eat more vegan. Um, and yeah, I think that cooking should be fun. And I hope that I was able to help you have some more fun in the kitchen. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, Eric, Janice, thank you for joining us today. And uh, Ruth, thank you for cooking. Um, Thanks for putting us together, Megan. I really appreciate it.
And I hope you all go out and make this and then log it in your app and show the pictures of your versions of it. I'm going to go take a picture of this one before I dive in and, and share it. That sounds great. So thank you, everyone. Have a great Saturday. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.